Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In today's video, I am sharing with you how my husband and I cut and installed our own butcher block countertops and farmhouse sink. So if you're new to my channel, welcome. I do videos on simple and thrifted living, DIYs, and homemaking. So I hope you hit that subscribe button if you enjoy those type of videos. But I'm gonna jump right in with the process of what it took for us to install our own butcher block countertops and um, some of the sink. I do more of the countertop than the sink. But anyways, the first thing we did was order our countertop and we scoured the internet, different stores for the best butcher block that we found for pricing and quality. We ended up going with a countertop from Lumber Liquidators and we got acacia wood, an inch and a half thick of eight foot slabs of butcher block. So this side over here needed to be like 72 inches long and then I'm not 100% sure over here what length that needed to be but we ordered that and it came into our local lumber liquidators and we decided to go pick that up because you save $150 to go pick it up instead of having it shipped to you. So our butcher box cost us $500 for two eight foot slabs which was super affordable compared to any other type of surface for countertop. Um, the thing that I have liked so far about this is uh, we used to have old tile countertop and nothing gets stuck in grout or cracks on this butcher block. So that is a bonus. The upkeep, yes, takes a little bit more, but um, I've just been oiling it with mineral oil for the past week. And then rule of thumb here I'm going to follow is oil once a day for the first week, oil once a week for the next month and then oil once a month for the lifetime that you have it. So yes, it takes some upkeep, but I like it and it's in the farmhouse style that I like. Anyways, so when we got our countertops, Blaze measured out very carefully. He uh, measured three times, cut once, because we did not want to make a mistake on this. So he measured it out and we hauled him out to a backyard and then he used a circular saw to cut that slab. And yes, we know there is a seam right here, but we're okay with that. We weren't gonna do an angle cut because I thought that's a lot of extra work. Let's just keep it straight, keep it simple. So he got that cut and the first one was really easy to install. Um, and then he went underneath the cupboards and screwed in from the bottom covered ledge to the countertop underneath so that it is solid and it doesn't move. We ran into a problem in this one with how crooked our wall is. So there's about like a fourth inch gap on one side and no gap on the other side. So when we get our tile in, we'll have to figure out how to fill that in in the back. All right, on to the other side. We already had installed our farmhouse sink. My husband did all that. He cut the hole in for the faucet and everything himself. Um, did some supports underneath the sink with some two by fours on the side and then down the sides to um, support a, uh, a little bit more. It is not real porcelain, so it's not 100 pounds. It was about 32 pounds. But I got the farmhouse sink off of Wayfair. Again, I scoured the internet and different places and found the one I liked. I wanted two slots. I did not want a big one that was a full sink. Anyways, so we measured out this countertop to the edge of the sink and as you can tell I have an inlaid sink. I wanted that with the butcher block over the back portion of the sink and the sides and that did cause a little bit more work so we really made sure to measure that out. Um, and then again my husband went in with a circular saw to cut the edge of the sink and then he went in with a skill saw and um, he had drilled a like a point so that he knew when to stop so that he could have a starter point to use for the skill saw to do the back portion and it did take a little extra time to do that because his blade had too many teeth on it so we had to go to our local hardware store and get one with less teeth we found out that worked better and he just did that and cut the long width of that and we did have a few issues with um, it curving in a little bit, but he ended up using a belt sander and got that smooth out. And you can't even tell that there were some rougher edges. So it is beautiful, perfect, got the measurements completely correct. He did a great job. So um, then we did a little section on the other side 
of my stove where there's like a three inch little gap that was super easy to cut just straight circular saw cut that my husband did so thank you lord that i have a husband who is handy anyways we screwed those in on the bottom again the butcher block countertops um and then the faucet i had ordered originally from amazon we found out did not go all the way through for the piping because it was a four inch piece that we had and with the butcher block going on top of the sink it wasn't long enough so we actually went and got a new faucet and i actually like it more um, we got it from frisbees with, and um, we got an artesian faucet to go in there it fits so much better it's actually better quality we did pay just twenty dollars more um, the original cost of it was like 240 but it was a display one so we got it for 90 dollars, which was super and i like the look of it it matches my hardware on my cupboards and so blaze installed all that all the water hooked up and everything so now we have brand new butcher block countertops like I said, I love them. Yes, they have some upkeep, but with oiling them regularly, it gave it a nice gloss to it. You don't want moisture to sit on them for a long time because that can start to warp it. I'm not gonna use my butcher block countertops to cut on. I will still use cutting boards. That's not why I got them. Um, I also wanted to mention we did silicone the entire edge of the butcher block to the sink. And then this little edge from the sink to the cupboard just so that there's no water seepage and that it is sealed and um, very clean looking lines with no gaps in there so that is the process if you have more questions about what we did what other tools and things we needed let me know in the comments below um, I'm just very glad to have countertops again and not tile because that is just a mess <laughs> and I love how this looks and it just adds to the hominess of our kitchen and I just think it will make a bigger statement piece and then especially when we get the tile done for our backsplash so anyways give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video if it was helpful for you like I said before, if you need more questions answered, let me know in the comments below. I'll probably maybe have to ask my husband some things if I didn't get everything in, in here that you wanted to know. But I think it looks great and I am excited to have great countertops and a brand new sink. So I hope you have a blessed and wonderful day and I will talk with you in my next video. Bye.